All right, welcome back to Bayou Time. And as we told you a few weeks ago, we always try to bring in local doctors to help. And, and when you go out in the community and you hear people talking about different aspects of you know medical situations that they might be in, it's always good to bring in a specialist every now and then and sort of help the public, the general public. And uh, tonight we have Dr. Satish Aurora who is with us tonight, there he is right there. He's a retina specialist and also a specialist of the vitreous. And we're gonna explain what that is in just a few short seconds. Also later on in the program, we have Dr. Chris Saul coming on, who's gonna talk about oral cancer. So tonight, you're gonna to get a lot of medical experts on to talk about a lot of things. But first of all, let's bring in Dr. Satish Aurora. We appreciate you being here tonight. We know you're very busy, but uh, it's great for you to come by and, and, and talk to us on Buy Your Time. A little bit about yourself, first of all. Where are you from? Sure. Well, originally born and raised in Houston. Okay. And uh, I've been in South Louisiana for about 11 years now and uh, originally came out after I finished medical school and uh, came out to train at LSU. Uh, stayed there to do uh, training in retina after I did my general ophthalmology training. and. Uh, when Katrina came through, that kind of changed our plans a little bit, and we had to move the program over to Baton Rouge. After I finished uh, in Baton Rouge, uh, I joined the Advanced Eye Institute with uh, Quentin Falgu, and I've been here in Homa for the last four years. Katrina changed plans for a lot of people. It yeah. did. It yeah. did. <laughs> now, the Advanced Eye Institute, of course, you're based, and did I say it correctly? You're the only retina specialist that's based out of this area. Other doctors come in with other eye institutes but you're based out of here that's correct sir in fact i live about uh, five minutes here from your studio right over in summerfield very so. good very good now for the audience let's just set the the tone before we get into the questions and we urge everyone in the audience also to give us a call at 879-1231 this is a perfect opportunity for you if you have eye problems to maybe ask dr aurora because i learned something new when we were planning this program and we'll get into that coming up but let's talk about uh, advanced eye institute all the the different things that y'all do over there and sort of set the stage for the program tonight sure well we've got uh, four well five doctors on staff now there's uh, Quentin Falgu who of course founded the advanced eye institute uh, he is our primary cataract LASIK uh, surgeon uh, and handles a lot of other uh, eye problems as well. Uh, we've got Dr. Edward Stahl, who's a glaucoma specialist and also takes care of some of our general eye care patients. Uh, we've got Dr. Darby Chasson, who is uh, an optometrist in the area and so specializes in glasses and contacts, but also takes care of some medical problems of the eye. And uh, we've got Dr. Edward Langlo, who is a glaucoma specialist. Uh, Finally, there's myself. I am a retina specialist. I originally trained in general ophthalmology, as I said, at LSU. Mm -hmm. And uh, then I did further training to specialize in the care of uh, diseases of the retina. And a lot of schooling to get where you had, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let, let's ask you this, and, and I asked you before we came on, because when I was doing a little research, of course, it says retina specialist and vitreous. What mm -hmm. is vitreous? Well, vitreous is the gel that fills most of the eye. It sits in front of the retina, which lines the back of the eye, and behind the lens. So uh, it fills over two-thirds of the eye. Okay. Let's start our discussion before we get to some phone calls. And just give me an overview of the eyes and how has it changed over the last 20 years? There's so many more procedures that you can get done and really so many more screenings that you can find out what's wrong with your eyes tell us about some of the new training well you're absolutely right things have changed beyond all recognition and in fact most of the procedures that both myself and dr falgu do uh, were either not in existence 20 years ago or would not be something you'd recognize if you looked at them 20 years ago and compared them to now uh, procedures have gotten far more reliable, complication rates are far lower, uh, comfort levels are incredibly high, uh, surgeries are incredibly fast and recoveries are quick, uh, so things have changed dramatically. For example, 
uh, the most common treatment that we do today for wet macular degeneration uh, didn't really exist uh, before approximately six years ago. Um, now you say macular degeneration, I've heard, and I'm writing down notes because this is so interesting to me, but I've heard in the past some doctors, some specialists in what they do, not necessarily all doctors, had to retire from their jobs because they had degeneration. Tell us a little bit about what that is and what you do now to try to help them out with that. Well, sure. Uh, that's one of the most common problems I deal with as a physician. Um, macular degeneration is a disease that affects the macula. And the macula is the center of the tissue in the back of the eye. And that's where your central accurate vision comes from. That's where your detail vision comes from. So that's where the vision comes from that you need to read, to drive, to watch TV, things like that. And over time in some people, that tissue will start to break down and get thin. And if it breaks down and gets thin, you can slowly lose a little vision at a time over a long period of time. Uh, that's called dry macular degeneration. Now, the real danger is that in some people, the degeneration will result in leakage of fluid or leakage of blood in the macula. And that we call wet macular degeneration. And the danger with that is that the disease progresses much quicker and a lot of vision can be lost very quickly. That said, there are treatments today and these treatments work far, far better than the treatments that were in existence even before five or six years ago, as I was saying. Okay, what are some of the, and before we get to the treatments, Right now, I'm wearing reading glasses because mm -hmm. I'm reading notes that I write down. But then when I look up, you're blurry. So you mm -hmm. see people all the time doing this. They yes, cock sir. their glasses on the front of their nose and they look over and then they do this. And a lot of a lot of procedures now that can stop all this from taking place. That's but correct. let's talk about some of the procedures that correct it. Would this be a degeneration? in my eyes because I have to wear this? Uh, technically, no. We wouldn't consider it a degen uh, degeneration. Yeah. It's a condition that every last one of us is gonna face. It's called presbyopia, and it's a natural change uh, in the eye as time goes on. And most people, it starts around the age of 40 or 42, right. uh, which is when we really start to need glasses That's when for it started. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And uh, I'm right behind you. Uh, <laughs> uh, there are procedures that can correct for that uh, these days. Uh, one of the procedures that was used for years was called CK, mm -hmm. and it's still used occasionally by some specialists. The, the upside of CK is that it seems to be relatively effective. The downside of CK is that it doesn't last for the long run. Now, there are other procedures that can be done that do last for the long run. For instance, one can do LASIK or PRK, which some people also call ASA or advanced surface ablation and what those procedures do is they are laser corrective procedures that actually change the shape of the front of the eye to change the distance at which that eye sees its best okay. and so what you can do is you can correct an eye or both eyes for a reading distance if you want to. Now you said CK, what mm -hmm. is RK compared to CK? Well RK was a procedure that was really widespread uh, about 20 years ago or so, and is not so widespread nowadays. And it was a procedure where they also changed the shape of the front of the eye, but the way that they did it was different. Mm -hmm. They actually used blades to make small cuts in the cornea, the clear part at the front of the eye, mm -hmm. so that its curvature would change. And the downside of RK, as we found for some patients, some have done remarkably well through the years, but some patients have found that through the years, the RK didn't stick, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And they wound up needing glasses, again, not just mm -hmm. for up close, but also for far away. Yeah, and I've had RK, mm -hmm. but I found through my 40s that my eyesight changed again. And in fairness to the doctor, he told me it would. Mm -hmm. I and mean, he told mm -hmm. me it would change. So it's changed again, and more for reading mm -hmm. than anything, a slight adjustment in far away vision, mm -hmm. so uh, you're right on that. So, if you've had RK, 
mm -hmm. like me. Can you get Lasix? In many cases, yes. And even in many of the cases where LASIK is not an, uh, an option, other laser correction procedures can be, such as ASA, which I mentioned earlier. Okay. Uh, there are, of course, some people for whom no laser procedure is going to be a good idea. Mm -hmm. But the only way to know that for certain is to take the appropriate measurements of the front of the eye, to check the eye out and to find out whether it's an eye that can tolerate one of those procedures well. Okay, what we're going to do, I see some of the phones are lighting up. We're going to start coming to you and mixing you in to this conversation because obviously everyone's eyes are very important to them and a lot of people always talk about their eyes. So when I come back, if you've ever experienced floaters, you know, I hear people talking about something floating across uh, their eyes. I've had that before. I don't have it as much as some people, but some people say they have it all the time. Floaters. Uh, bright lights affect you, fluorescent lights affect you. We're going to come back. We're going to find out more from our expert tonight, Dr. Satish Aurora. Don't go away.